Welcome to the Housework Workshop Vlog, episode 003, starting right now. In this week's episode, I've got a weird question about shoes. I'm going to share with you my least favorite comment. I also need some help from my friends all over the world. We are going to be manufacturing a few parts for the 2x72 grinder build. And we're also going to do a workshop showcase from a friend of mine all the way over in Ireland. But first, let's talk about smoothies. Smoothies, Brian, really? You're going to talk to us about smoothies? Isn't this a channel about tools and metal and working with your hands? Yeah, it is, but I've had some health issues recently, and honestly, the only one thing that fixed it was my diet. So I got a blender for the workshop. Now I know what you're thinking. Brian, when did this turn into a cooking channel or a health or diet channel? Well, it hasn't, but honestly, I was 20 pounds overweight and I felt terrible and I was not productive. So I started going on a blended foods diet, some lettuce greens, some fruit, sweeten it with some stevia and a little bit of juice, guzzle it down. Does it taste good every time? No. Is it uh, completely 100% satisfying to me? No. Do I feel great? Yes. It works for me and I wanted to share that with you. Also, I wanted to talk about Australia. I know, it's a weird segue, but I'm curious. Do you guys have smoothies in Australia? And I truly do not mean to push my dietary suggestions upon you, but one of the benefits of eating better is feeling better. And when you feel better, you're more productive and you can do better things with your life and your time and you give the people around you more of who you really are. When you don't feel good, I mean, I tend to be a little bit of a jerk. Smoothies help with that, even if they don't taste that great. The real reason I bring up Australia is because a lot of you have been watching my videos. I'm curious as to how people down in Australia have found an Americano such as myself, a yank as they say, interesting. Or maybe it's the 2x72 grinder project. I have heard you guys like your 2x72 grinders. I've been playing around with a new uh, tagline. I normally say, screw it, let's do it, but I also thought it would be kind of funny to say, you can screw it. You know, like you can do it, but you can screw it. So we're making up some stickers and some t-shirts with those phrases on them. So uh, yeah, be looking for those in the future. All right, let's get on with the show. This is two by two tube steel, about eight feet of it. And today we're gonna be cutting it down to make another 2x72 prototype build. And I'm also gonna start manufacturing the parts and have them up for sale on our website. So I figured, why not? I'm just gonna get started. And the way that I designed the 2x72 prototype, you only really needed to cut a few select lengths of the same type of steel. For instance, this 2x2, two two, you need four pieces that are nine inches long and one piece that is eight inches long. So let's do it. Wait, you can screw it. Does that sound right? I don't know. Screw it. Let's do it. This quarter inch is no joke. Got a slight issue with the horizontal bandsaw, the grizzly one I talked about in the last vlog. The cuts are not straight, so as it was cutting through my tube steel, it was leaving, I don't know, about a sixteenth of an inch at one end, which you wouldn't normally think would be a big deal, but it is a big deal in this case because these are for the risers that hold up the grinding head, and if you don't have those exactly at 90 degrees, uh, then you gotta grind them down. So I thought, well, no big deal. I'll take them to the grinder and I'll grind them down. But that is a ton of work, especially if you're making like 10 or 15 of these at a time. To try to true them up is just a huge headache. So I'm going through and dialing in this guy here and this guy here just to try to level this out somewhat. And then I came up with this concept. Take my mini level and zero it out on the deck. 
and if I take it over to my my workpiece, I know that I have to shim up an end. Let's see how it goes. I already cut four, so it's a huge pain in the ass. Quick side note, this is all the steel you need to build my 2x72 belt grinder. Costs about 50 bucks. Remember how I said I needed your help in the beginning of this video? Well, this is the plan set right here, and it's about 43 pages long. It's uh, full of really good details and everything else. Uh, but I've been tasked with figuring out how to convert this over to metric. And because I'm an imperialist, I really don't understand metric that well. I, I mean, I get it. I'm building this thing with imperial steel, meaning these tubes are two inches by two inches. And I'm not really 100% sure what's commercially available in metric sizes that is the equivalent of this. Why that is important is because when you build this grinder, I really need these pieces to be able to intersect and, and I need them to, to, to nest, which is not exactly all that easy if I don't really know what's commercially available as far as steel goes. So I need your help. I need to figure out what the equivalent of a two inch by two inch piece of tube steel is that's got a 0.25 inch wall, which from my calculations is about 6.35 millimeters. And then I also need one and a half inch by one and a half inch with the same wall thickness. And I need them to be able to sort of nest like this. And I need them not to have a ton of play in them. I did reach out to a couple people via email and I got some answers already, but I really want to know what you think because let's crowdsource this thing. Thanks in advance. Your nose. And I got one more question for you in regards to shoes. What do you guys wear in your shop? I mean, do you wear regular shoes? I've been wearing these Sanooks and honestly, they're wearing out really quick and I've always got hot sparks and things landing on my feet. And I think they're made out of cotton or maybe they're made out of hemp or some sort of weird natural fiber. But I am really actively seeking a good, comfortable leather, preferably black. I'm very picky when it comes to that. It's got to match my belt, you know. And I'm looking for a black leather shoe. If you have a suggestion, leave it for me down in the comment section. Thanks. And now it's time for my favorite comment of the week. Favorite comment of the week. Wait a minute. No, it's my least favorite comment of the week. That's right. This week, Somebody, dare they write in and just criticize my design? This is ridiculous. I can't stand for this. All right, Matt, me and you, go time. Matt wrote in on one of my videos and he said my 2x72 prototype build was too heavy and over-engineered, in his opinion. Well, Matt, I'm just curious. Have you seen other 2x72 grinders out there? Have you looked at the other designs? Have you taken five friggin' minutes and looked around to see what other people are working on and how they design their grinders? I just cannot figure out how you could think that my design is over-engineered. Now, I will agree with you on the heavy part. That, in my opinion, is necessary. I like heavy. It should be solid. It should be industrial. It should sit on the desk and not move when you use it. That to me is a positive. I mean, where are you taking your two by 72 grinder? Are you going over to a friend's house? Are you picking it up and you're moving it over there? Like you're like, hey, you got like a land party, but instead it's a grind party. Maybe there's this phenomenon I just don't know about. Heavy and over-engineered. That hurts. All right, I'm over it. I'm done. I said what I needed to say. You and me are still cool, by the way. For now. I got an email from all the way over on the other side of the pond from my buddy Robert, and he gave us a peek, a sneak peek, a little tiny window into his workshop world and sent me a whole bunch of really cool photographs of it and some details on some of the machines, and I would love to read you his email so you can kind of take a step into his workshop and see what it's like to be a metal worker in Ireland. Hi, Brian. Here are a few pics of my workshop. It is only taking me 25 years to accumulate. I made the belt grinder when I was an apprentice. 
The iron worker and pillar drill were new old stock and I only bought them as I got them at an unbelievable price. I have an electric forklift that I got as a payment for some work I did for a forklift company that I did repairs for years. The bandsaw and ring roller I bought new and wouldn't be without and the fly press is a recent purchase as again it came at the right price. The lathe and mill are old but are good enough for the work that I do. I work full time as a maintenance tech for a medical device company and the workshop is my hobby where I make gates, railings and all sorts of other stuff. I also do all of the repairs locally. I'm currently working on making a gas forge including the burners with my son so we can try our hand at blacksmithing. I'll send you a few more pictures of the forge in another email. The bridge port is old and has loads of backlash but I can work with that. I hope you guys enjoyed that little walkthrough of Robert's workshop over in Ireland. Robert, thank you. Thank you, thank you for sending those to us. One of the things I really wanna mention is how cool is that friggin' rotary table on your bridge port, dude? Unbelievable, that thing is massive, unreal. I paid $71 for the cheap one I have and it's only four inches and that thing must have been crazy expensive when it was new. Anyhow, thank you so much, Robert, for sharing with us. I truly appreciate you and it was awesome to kind of see into your world and see what you do. Thanks for sharing. If you would like to be featured on my vlog, send me an email, brian at housework.us. Send me some context and some pictures of what you've got going on in your workshop and I'll feature you right here on my vlog. If you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. As always, there are links down in the description for everything I have right here in my workshop and studio. It's categorized down so you can find all the things that you're looking for, and that's a free way to support my channel. Now, if you want to take your support to the next level, I do have a Patreon page now. For as little as $1 a month, you can support everything I've got going on right here in my workshop. If you're not into using Patreon, you can literally buy me a coffee. There's a link down in the description and I love coffee. Also, there is one more way to support my channel now. Down right below this video, there is a link to my Teespring store and you can buy a housework t-shirt or a hoodie or something cool, and that is another way to support my channel. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. I truly appreciate you. I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. Housework.